public engaged um, can I start with this as long as it's right there and get your uh, yeah. eval sheet Unless. I mean it's then, not official yeah. it's not official business but I just wanted to make them aware but we're not going any further than that fill it out Would you? oh Yep, but we you need to vote on it. Yeah, I'm can supervising we, games. Oh, so okay. put her first and then we can we can do that either. So she can be All right. Well, then let's uh, go straight to the citizens forum. I hear none, so I'm going to move right on to let's go to activities director on E uh, Great. report. Yeah, thank you for accommodating. I we have a basketball game going on which is a reschedule from last week, so um, supervising that. So we'll start with community ed. We currently have elementary basketball running um, and archery running. Um, elementary basketball continues to have good numbers out at kindergarten, first grade. This is our breakdown of ages. Kindergarten, first grade group, second and third grade group, and then a fourth, fifth um, for boys and girls we have split out. Um, the fourth, fifth are traveling quite a bit. We had our girls at a new Folden tournament last weekend. They won, game, won, won one game and lost two, and then our boys go to Carlstead this weekend. Um, that schedule just went out with the boys, by the way. Um, and uh, yeah, it continues to be a good season. Excited um, about the kind of enthusiasm that's there. Upcoming, we have Driver's Ed is starting February 28th. We have Rod Building starting February or March 3rd, and snowmobile safety um, put on by Joyce Beckel is on February 2nd. And that's the snowmobile safety is just a, a, not just, that's the field day. Students will take an online course prior to that, and then they show up and do the uh, safety on the 2nd. Um, there's lots of what's exciting and lots of different opportunities in terms of community ed, which is exciting. Um, Janelle Lowe's and Lisa Beckstrand are working on paddle boarding right now, as in they're trying it out first and then going to see if there's, if they, one can do it, but two, if there's interest in potentially taking lessons. So paddle boarding, uh, ski club, which has got some interest, pickleball, um, challenge becomes volunteerism. All, all of those are great ideas that I think could have interest within the community, but trying to make sure that we've got enough resources in terms of supporting them um, with instructors and things. Excuse me, things like that. Um, any questions on community ed? OK. I do, uh, who's putting on the uh, driver's training? Um, like an online thing? Or? Nope, his name's Brian Denault. Uh, he's exactly. out of Warro. He's out of Warro. He's still, I was going to ask you, so he you has the keys for our in one Impala, and then he has the only set. And oh, OK. And stuck where it's at. It's been there. <laughs> Yeah, move it, and I don't have a number for the guy, so. I have his you number. Yeah, <laughs> I do too. I'll text it to you. If you are talking to him, tell him that all vehicles that are parked in the bus garage, the keys are left in there. Okay, I will we'll try and get that back. So, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, activities director. Uh, we, have, we are hosting One Act Play subsections this Saturday. It is open to the public and free of charge. Um, so please come on out and support our um, drama club, One Act Play Club. Uh, they are putting on a play called the Over, not the, called Overtones, which they're quite excited about. Um, and we are hosting, so it's our own play, and then uh, Marshall County Central, Rosa, Warroad, and uh, Greenbush, Middle River. So we'll host five plays. We'll start at noon. Um, there's various order. I think we are actually the last play of the day. Lots of games, um, lots of games happening. Uh, a lot this in the next 10 days. Basketball, boys and girls basketball, hockey, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, all of which can be seen online. That's a much quicker way to say that. <laughs> so we did have a um, high school hockey coaching change, which you'll see um, in the board meeting itself. Uh, Bruce Sindelier stepped down uh, mid-December. And Dean Krause stepped up. Um, I know that there's been a little history with that change in the past, and we worked out a solution where Bruce got paid. We, we prorated it, the, the whole salary for that position. So Bruce got paid what he worked for the, the about a month, and then this um, the rest was will be paid out to Dean um, throughout the course of the season. So 
was worked out for everybody. Everyone is in agreement. I think it's very clear for everyone, and contracts have been um, signed in that regard. So I, uh, Corinne had emailed me with a little bit of concern to make sure that it was just very clear as to what had transpired in terms of that change. So I feel confident and comfortable that that's the case. Um, we did hire a varsity baseball coach, Nick Anderson, who has been the junior high slash assistant coach for the past four years, um, has applied and we've hired. I'm excited in his baseball knowledge. I think he's young and committed in terms of um, time. And he works at Marvin's over in Warroad and Marvin's is, is quite flexible in terms of um, being uh, willing to let him um, you know, take time to come over and coach. So excited about that hire. Still in the process of looking for an assistant and or and junior high baseball coach as well as a um, junior high track coach and junior high softball or JV softball coach. Um, okay. Um, in terms of opportunities and challenges, like I said last time, committed coaching staff. In terms of COVID has been a major, major challenge in terms, not just for us, I know you'll hear more about that, but um, other schools, we had a Moose Lake game, high school hockey game moved, we've had other games moved because teams just don't either have too many kids out for COVID or have too many um, illnesses in general. So a lot of what you're seeing in the busyness of this week is rescheduled games and just trying to pack things in so that we get um, people playing. Um, haven't lost a ton of games yet because we have had to reschedule. Girls basketball is one where we are not going back to Walker to just because it's too far and, you know, um, just a tr too much of a trek. We did have a boys basketball game, um, double, not double header, but Friday, Saturday combo in the cities, which I was quite excited about. They're going to go play Ogilvy on, which is like south of Brainerd. Um, Ogilvy on Friday, and then Yuba Medical Academy in Minneapolis on um, Saturday. But unfortunately, Yuba um, shut down because of COVID, and thus, and we couldn't find a second game, and thus, it's not really um, effective to just go four hours for one game on a Friday night. So, um, the flip side of that is, I think there's some opportunity to pick up games. It, lots of schools are kind of shuffling in a way that we did pick up a game with Silver Bay for the boys basketball. So. Hoping to get them a full count, full schedule, but you know, just do what we can until the end. Any questions on the activity director stuff? Mm -hmm. Driver's Ed, um, mm -hmm. did they change the date? Okay, so we had to shift it because they didn't yep. have enough kids. What's the birth date there? Do you happen to know that? Oh, it's, it's a know? similar birth date. Yep, it's, and he's a little bit flexible on this. The date we've advertised is 15 by April 1st. Okay. Um, we have enough space where that, if there's a kid who's you know, 15 by mid-May, we likely would let them join. So if you've got a specific kid in mind, let me know. Um, and that's got to be confirmed through Brian. I have to, if there is somebody outside those parameters, but he's been flexible. It's okay. mostly so that they could take the test and then get the drive the behind the wheel done this summer. So. Okay. And is it in, per, mm -hmm. per, it's in, person, in person here? Not yep. the Zoom, like yeah, that. he comes over to, from Warroad every day for those three weeks to make it happen. So appreciate that. And it was moved just because it was conflicting too much with fall sports. Oh. We had a lot of people want to do it, but just became a challenge in terms of that schedule. And so he was willing to do it. And this is kind of between the, the seasons. Um, so yeah, you'd really have to nail it. Like, yeah. Between <laughs> yeah. And he, we were doing it like first three weeks of September or something yeah. like that. It just wasn't a great no. date. So I appreciate his flexibility on that. Sure. Did we ever get the batting cage? Thing no, and that's it's. I I just didn't wasn't able to make it happen. I mean, I would like to, and is I think it still, yeah, it's viable. Yes, it's a priority thing that has moved down my list just based on availability of Did my we time. Did we ever get the post from Northstar? They said that they had them, but again, I just couldn't make it. Right. Couldn't convert, they so to speak. Down. Yeah, so I'm hoping that, I, I don't foresee it happening this year, but I'm hoping by next year we'd make it happen. So, appreciate you following up on that, though. Um, okay, activity bus. Uh, 
Brad, feel free to jump in on this. Yeah. But um, due to low slash non-existent numbers, I mean, many nights where we didn't have any riders, we have decided to suspend for the remainder of the winter season. Um, we would like to try again in the spring. I think the thought being that we could advertise alongside the spring sports schedule and say when we have the spring sports meeting, two parents, when they're in the room, say this is an offering. It also, I think, will be a little bit less financial commitment because it's we'd only do one ride a day. You're not trying to... Um, to accommodate the two early and late practice schedule for basketball. So, um, you know, same question as the last time I had on here, how much do you cater to individual schedules? You know, I've gotten some feedback from people to say, well, if it was only, or if only you stopped here, which is fair, but at some point, I'm not, I'm not, we're not doing another bus route, right? That's not the point. So. I'd like to think there's an opportunity for it, and like I said, we'll see what the spring brings. I think hopefully, hopefully we get some more information. I think that's the thing I've struggled with, is that we just don't have um, a ton of information about like why. I think what, I think what yeah. the part of the issue was is that we kind of sprung on right when winter sports. Mm -hmm. So I think our main goal was like, hey, if there's a kid that's on the principal playing, then he basically, because of... Uh, can't get a ride or that sort of thing. So I'm thinking maybe if we do kind of advertise it before spring sports start, that it might, it might work. And then kind of know after that. Yeah. That's kind of the way I look at it. We didn't have a lot of money pumped into gas. Thing, that's for sure. Well, and that, that's the thing is it's like we didn't have many kids, so it's not like we ran the bus, you know. I, you know, I, and I talked to a few parents and I was like, well, if you, it, it was just like, you know, if it was at this time, or my kids got practice at that time, and it's like, you know, you're not going to have 10 buses running around. So it, it, uh, I think if people can, you know, we get a couple, you know, three or four kids that are going to join spring sports because of the bus, then, yeah. you know, that would be awesome. But we'll kind of, I think we'll kind of know if it's worth it at all after the spring one like you said we could get sign-ups at that spring sports meeting I mean those are well attended and you know actually get people's names on a list like this, these are the details hold hold their feet to the fire in some way so okay any questions about any of that great okay I'm headed to the base basketball what sport am I in? <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I guess we'll go back to the top of the agenda. And Superintendent Jeff Nelson report. Uh, any board committee reports? <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. This is form. Yeah, board committee. You had, I know you had a finance meeting just now, right? Um, Crystal covers that when she does the... Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we have school forest meeting. Did you? We just planned, we picked a day for the candlelight ski. Which is, I think I saw something, but when is it? It's like the 16th of March. Oh, of March. Yeah, we went, didn't we? We went to March. We did, because of the moon. Yes. I would have to look at my notes at home. Yeah, but yeah. It was the first week in March. What was day it? of the week okay. did you pick? It was like a Wednesday, wasn't Wednesday, it? Yeah. Because it didn't, it didn't um, coincide with any other school events, no. did it? Or was that the day that there was the Thief oh, River so knowledge? Well, well, it's knowledge Wednesday. Ball. There shouldn't really be anything, right? Well, we have Knowledge Bowl this Wednesday. Oh. There but was usually there's no sports. Thief River. That's correct. Yeah. Well, it's kind of During a weird day. time of the year anyways. Is, yeah. There probably wouldn't be any sports anyway. I don't think so. So, and then we just divvied out who was going to do what for that, I think. It was a quick meeting. So what time is it at? February 16th, was it? I thought so. Oh, it's February 16th? March 16th, but what time? Starts at 7. I suppose. Is that when it starts? So time it gets dark in March. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> the moon comes out like at 5 or something, wasn't it? Yeah, Bobby was online looking it up. That's all we talked about, I believe. 
Okay. Uh, other committees? Do you want if we had one? Do you guys have one? Did we have one? I have no idea. I think you guys did. What day would that have been on? Um, <clears throat> would have been the fourth? I don't remember. Wasn't On my there calendar, I always have too? two days pop up. I know we don't have them twice. Yeah, we had it on January 4th. I can't remember. There was like three that we put on hold, and the other ones are up for approval that's in the board packet nothing outlandish most of them are just yeah simple in the board packet is basically it yeah and the ones on hold are a little more in-depth with changes and need a little more work so I do like the school weapons one it makes it sound like okay these are the weapons that the school will maintain <laughs> <laughs> Any other board committees that want to chime in? Okay, hearing none, uh, let's move on then to Superintendent Jeff Nelson. Okay, I have the enrollment report. Um, preschool is at 41 students, and that's down from down two from September. K-6 is at 224, that's, that's even to what we started out in September. High school is at 215, that's down two from September. Total K-12 <coughs> is 436, and then we're down two students from September. Um, COVID data report, I have today's updated one in the pile on the table here. And that's the one I will focus on. So, if you start at the top and move, work your way down, I just I'll go right down to the weekly case counts for the county, and we can go back to January second through the eighth. The count for the county was at 35. January 9th to the 15th, it spiked to 50, and that kind of coincides to our spike, uh, where we had 25 cases among students and staff. Um, the 16th through the 22nd, it's down to 24. And our numbers for last week uh, were down to 12. So we went from 25 two weeks ago, we're down to 12. Hopefully we're continuing that trend. Uh, we didn't have school today, so tomorrow we'll see how testing starts out. Um, any questions on any of that? Do you ever get a chance to tally up how many kids in the school have had it? COVID? No. That's something no Joe could do. Yeah, I'm thinking the way you are, but we got to be getting close to a critical number there. Somewhere. I would think so. I mean, well, we look at our yeah. we'll just population. go back through the reports and count how many up. Well, I could give you totals. <laughs> um, or you could use the spreadsheet right? to do it. <laughs> it's better than me going back trying to figure it out. Yeah. There should be a formula for that. I could give you just totals. There's some kids that have had it twice, and some staff that... Well, yeah, that's why, I mean, yeah. it should be close. I mean, yeah. even if you count uh, counted people double, it's going to be within five or six then. Right, then yeah. you had vaccinated numbers, and I know some who have been vaccinated have also gotten it. Yeah. Uh, you know, but still, I'd like so, to believe we're hitting some... I, I can give you a total... I can give you a total uh, from these reports of ones we've tested and how many have yeah, tested right. positive. But I don't think it's as high as we think it is, because our last week was was our biggest spike, and that was 25 that we had documented. Prior to that, we were kind of in that six to seven range at the school, if I remember right. In the first first two weeks, we were at 19, so we started off at kind of a high note, then we just hit another one. Um, but I can I will. That's an easy number I can send out. Um, so all this, most of the fall, you think we were at six or seven a week? We yeah, well, it wasn't it wasn't fall. huge numbers. We, yeah. I mean, we didn't our numbers. Hit double digits. No. And like even all of last year, we no. really didn't have no. huge numbers. No. So. Um, but we we do a lot of testing. I think we did 120 tests two weeks ago. Last week we we're at like 99. Um, so that accounts for some of it too, but 
right now the trend, hopefully last week's trend will continue and this week we'll have half the number we had last week. That's my hope. Um, I would like to say before I forget, um, there have been, especially last two weeks ago when we had 25 positives, we had a number of staff out and I can't say enough about the staff at Lake Lewis who are so willing to step in and do something totally not on their job description just to keep the building open and um, Mary didn't see her office for a week because she was in the lunchroom <laughs> uh, serving up mashed potatoes so the kids um, noticed too because yeah. I know my kids came back and said yeah Miss Merkin was in the lunchroom serving lunch <laughs> so and that really a regular thing so they get to see you <laughs> Once a week or something. Well, no, every other week. <laughs> Most of them see her plenty anyway. <laughs> yeah, the difference was I was behind the counter, not roaming around talking to the kids. Or not disciplining them. That too. Feeding them instead. So I'm very fortunate to have staff like Mary and many others that just you ask and they just jump forward and, and help out where they need to and so that helps a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Um, In-person plan, I have an updated January 24th one. Pretty much everything's the same. Um, a few updates. Um, the biggest ones I would say would be on page Starting on page five, um, the biggest change is our transitioning to the CDC recommended for the shortened five day um, with masking for isolation and quarantine. Um, and it's pretty much spelled out. Um, and you'll notice, irregardless of what status we're in, whether it's uh, low, moderate, or high, or, or operating with the same um, format for for quarantine staff and students. Um, otherwise everything else is fairly similar. I made a few adjustments um, with the athletics because we discussed it last meeting. Um, basically all students, coaches, and fans will follow state high school league guidance for practice and contest, more restrictive measures may be imposed by the district while under the high transmission level is the major change. And right now we're in the high transmission level, but we're just following uh, high school league guidance and practices. So that this will be up for approval and then it will be posted on the website. Um, one thing that I'm looking at, because um, I get pros and cons from the public as far as the instant alerts that go out when there's classroom positives. Um, it used to be I would send anytime there was a positive and there was a potential for the student to be in the classroom, I would send that notice out. Um, I'm considering, and I want some feedback from the board, uh, not doing that because um, we send out Every week, by Friday, we're, we're posting um, basically the report that you have here. And it has a rundown by day when there's there's positives in each and at what grade level and location. Um, unless there are two or three and we think there's a spike in a specific classroom or grade level, um, what are what is your feedback? I think you should quit doing them. Just from a parental perspective, I answer it. Oh, okay, hang on. It's yep. Well, I feel like it's everywhere. Actually, yep. I mean, like it's. I think it's different than it was months and months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of people are tired of just hearing about it. I guess. Well, I don't, like, I, you know what I mean. Like well, it's I mean, not like, that they don't want to know, but if they're already getting the information, no, it's available. Yes. They have to go to the website and get it. Yeah. You know, unless there was another spike of 25, I might do a all call to everyone. Right. So. Let's say, yeah, unless there's a 
So what do you think of this if there's a, there's a big spike overall for multiple kids out of a class? Okay. And then do it, say, two or more even. Okay. Because usually it's onesies, one and one there, but I mean, you get two or three. Well, and some people, I think, some people who don't follow it at all, like they don't, I mean, unless they get a call, they have no idea because I've had a couple of people say, oh, to me, like, oh, there, there must be some more cases at the school because I got a phone call and I'm like, there's always been cases at the school. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So, so the intent was the information to be used by parents, mm -hmm. you know, to make decisions. Yeah, make a decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. If, if that's not being acted on, I guess it is, there's a redundancy or a, a, a not need for it if it's available yeah. for those who want to act on it somewhere else. Yeah. The other question, I guess, is at least for your part, how much time does it take? I mean, is it a 15 minute type thing? Does Depends it, on how many I have to do. To, to put it in. Two weeks ago, it took a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that, that may be something to think about. Well, I mean, or if there's a peak, could you, like, if we had another week where there was a high 20 yep. some in the school, like to say, you know, we're experiencing high numbers, you know, this information yeah, is know. available. Okay. That way it doesn't. For your reference at any time on the website or whatever yep. and then yep they've been told is everyone okay with that yep and then that's how i will move forward with it uh, what else do i have did you want to do my uh yeah evaluation now because i it. It i'm done really not a lot to say there. It's just you all have the evaluation. You've seen them before. Uh, board member Robita, you may, were you around when we did this last time? Mm, I don't think you were. I don't recall this. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, this gets a little more confusing, the setting of goals. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can either have a conversation with you or show you what we ended up with last time, uh, you know, how we arrived at it. But effectively, this is what I'd like you guys to get done and back to the district office by the end of the week, if that's realistic. I mean, I'd like to move forward with it. We did it last year at, at this juncture about a month ago in December, and uh, so we're already quite behind. Uh, we're supposed to be doing this on a six-month basis, so I'd like to get that back to the district office for sure, and thoughts on that again, you know, our goal establishment, what we're expectation, our expectations are so that um, I think it's Robin and is it just you and I? Just and, the two of us. And Carla. So you okay? So you would be on that, we, and then we could meet with Jeff and get that squared away and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I forget all my committees? Well, I know there's like the six same of us. As, there's the same as negotiations. Oh, okay. It matches negotiations, right? Yeah, I, I'm just the reason I'm hesit hesitating, and I should be prepared on that. But I, at one point, I thought it was just. Jeff Bircham and I at one point. Mm -hmm. and oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, we Just didn't do have all three. Oh, I thought it was the whole committee. I'm more than happy to have all three. That's fine. It makes yeah. it more of a, just a question of getting everybody together at yeah. the same time. But yeah. anyway, point is, the paperwork I'd like to get done by the end of the week. If anybody has a problem with that, let me know. But And where would you like them to submit that? I would, I'd say the district office. Okay. Give it to at Hart. one point, we tried to do it electronically, and it just got confusing. So yeah. let's just put it in an envelope and put it in the office, and I'll pick them all up on Friday. And then collate the numbers, and we can have a discussion as a group after that. And then hopefully, we're done with this, or at least have it ready for the next board meeting. Yep. Is there any information anyone needs from me to be able to fill that out? Okay. Okay. I can ask you, I guess. Yeah. Do. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Jeff, you're done. Mm -hmm. Uh, high school principal Mary Merchant. Good evening. Um, semester one ended on Friday, and grades will be due at the end of the day tomorrow, and then at the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, they'll get submitted out to parents, and students and parents can access them on Student View and Parent View. Um, and then academic eligibility begins on Monday, January 31st. Our students last year had an opportunity to take a plumbing class through Northwest Tech, and Jeff Brower, the instructor, contacted me prior to Christmas break um, to offer it again to kids. I wish we would have had a little more notice, but we do have three students signed up, and then a fourth one um, who asked if he could take it a second time. 
And Jeff said yes, and when he met with the kids, he came in person to meet with the kids last week to make sure they knew how to get to their college email and the D2L where assignments are. And the students who wanted to repeat it, Jeff's going to put them in the next level class. So um, that's a wonderful opportunity for our kids uh, and great, great relationship to establish um, to give them that opportunity. Our Senior High Knowledge Bowl is doing fantastic this year. Their um, first competition, they got third place. And when I did my board report on January 5th, they had a first place finish. Last week, we had to. Um, use the word cancel. I think it'll be rescheduled, but, but the competition and that was going to be at Deep River Falls be, be canceled or postponed. Um, and then Mrs. Castle is working with the junior high kids. And for Knowledge Bowl, junior high is 7th, 8th, and 9th grade. Um, and then senior high, 10 through 12. So ex excited to see that for our kids. And regarding the um, candlelight tea, Knowledge Bowl is always during the day, so those kids should be home if they want to take part in that way before it'd be time for that to start. Um, extremely excited that Amy Hendrickson started today as our high school math teacher. I see she had pending recommendation that the board approves that tonight. Um, she comes to us from Chisholm. She was working um, this past semester doing online, so when that ended, it made it an um, easy transition for her to be able to come into the classroom. She has 25 years experience coming from Chisholm, um, has worked a lot with, um, honestly, students anywhere from 7th through 12th grade, and a lot with, um, I'm going to use the word at-risk kids, so I'm going to say kids who math may not be their thing that they really love, so um, I think she is going to be a great fit with our staff. Um, her and her husband are very familiar with the, the community. He comes here a lot to go fishing, so... Um, they found a place. Excited that she was able to find an apartment. Oh, so, so she did. Yeah, Good. she that did was find my an question. apartment and moved in this past weekend. So. so I'd hate to lose that opportunity because I couldn't find a oh, place to live. I know, I know. Oh, no, we had a place for her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Um, yeah, with that said, I'm excited. I get to attend the um, high school principals conference, so I'll be taking off for the cities um, tomorrow and going to attend the school uh, um, workshop also Wednesday morning prior to the start of the conference. I'm able to get all that in in one trip. Um, our welding students have had the opportunity to work with Seth. Our welding class, um, unbeknownst to me and Diane and Nathan till school started, how large, um, how many kids he accepted in there, and he's like, well, we'll just make it work. Well. I didn't like how many kids that were in there every day. I just felt there were too many that couldn't get that hands on. So we split it because we were pretty even with numbers, junior, seniors. So they're in the welding shop every other day. And on those opposite days, the kids who wanted to engage and do rod building, Seth is working with them. So it's a fantastic experience. Um, they've already sold a couple of those. and. and they are so professionally done, so that's very exciting to add that opportunity to our kids with that class. Um, and our one act play, as um, we were told about already, and then today, teachers were the high school teachers were able to participate in a synergy training. Katie, Mrs. Hasbargen, and Bob, Mr. Lane, um, led that about a month or so ago. They took a half day to. Um, work with Synergy on updates. Um, there is so much that we can do on there that we did not know about. So um, I do foresee us, we, we purchased Schoology for this year, which is a place to put assignments and um, let's just, just another platform. Well, with what we are finding out that we can do with Synergy, which is how parents access and students rather than having two different places I foresee us just going to using synergy because parents can see everything on there so um, teachers worked on that today and I just foresee that's the way we go I can't testify when teachers ask me today and it's like I don't want them to think that this was not a good use of their time on Schoology this year had we known what we know now we I don't think would have gone that route, but um, to make it easier for parents so 
that they can see what the assignments are. If there's videos, they can they can see everything that the kids should be doing. So um, I think it's just going to be a, a better way for us to communicate with our parents. Um, and then kudos to our kids in between all our shortages with the lunchroom. I just kind of went down the hall each day and um, we had kids washing tables after breakfast and after lunch, so it helped yeah. out immensely. Yeah. Um, I, I cannot speak higher of our students, how willing they are to help out when you need help. And that's it. Do you have any questions for me? What, uh, it was Amy, right? What's Amy yeah. going to, which math is she going to be teaching? She'll have 7th and 8th grade and geometry. And what kind of numbers do you get them knowledgeable for kids showing up? I mean, what's the high school? Um, well, high school has a, yeah, high school has enough for two teams. I think the last time, like the first time they went, I think they took ten. Honestly, vehicles makes a difference too on how many we take. I think the last time they went, though, they took five kids. So typically, it'd be a team of five. Okay, uh, thank you. Yes. Business office, Crystal Landine. Um, so we just went over the budget report for December 31st. There isn't anything too, I guess, out there. Um, we're pretty much in line with our budget as of right now. The only thing is, is again, the community service. It's showing right now that we are above expenditures by 138%, and that is because 353000 of that is from the pool. So when we do the revised budget, I'll include those dollar amounts in there. Um, and then we went over some audit questions that the board had as far as year-end journal entries and discussed how basically those are the journal entries that we have every year um, as far as because the levy all streams through for example, the levy all streams through one account, and that year end is when you spread it out. Um, same with state A, that all streams through one account throughout the year, and then at year end you um, spread that out as well. Um, we are going to touch base, though, with our auditor, Holly, as far as some things that she brought up to was that Paul that I was doing? Or was that she's Jeff and Roger Okay. With Jeff, as far as accruals and that kind of thing. Um, we also discussed a way to hopefully get rid of some of those findings for student activity accounts as far as having new forms to fill out, um, to keep track, making sure there's signatures, and then we are going to actually pull all the student activity essentially from the general fund, even though it's part of it, but then we're going to have files for each individual student activity account, and that way I feel like it'll be easier for accounting purposes at audit time to just, okay, they want something from class of 2025. We can just pull that class of 2025 file and have all this stuff included in there. Otherwise, I think that's about it. Unless you guys have anything to add. Pretty much it is, as far as I remember. Uh, in terms of the audit, I don't know how that falls down in terms of the hierarchy, who's totally responsible for it, but I got the sense that they were well pleased with the way this building runs, correct? I mean, other than when you start talking about student activity funds and stuff, that's quite a bit of minutia they're looking at and nothing, I mean, th that was a good audit, I guess. I mean, I feel good about I that. I felt personally uh -huh. very good about the audit. Absolutely. Because like I told them too, I basically feel like that's kind of like my review of my job. Yeah. So, I felt good about it. All right. Well, thanks for that, too. Okay. We already did uh, the activities director. Let's move on to Seth Putz, Building and Grounds. I don't have much listed. I don't have anything listed. But uh, this week, I'm going to start up benchmarking from energy uses last year, compare it, and uh, take a look and see where we can make improvements on it. Um, we're going to be looking for another employee after tonight. Once it goes through the board, we're going to be looking for another full-time employee, and we still have not found anybody for the plow truck yet. That's about as much as I got. 
winter's over. Isn't that good? <laughs> well, I got five more months. <laughs> Guarantees a <of> blizzard. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, my phone hasn't gone off the thing yet. <laughs> you want to get on the normal tip? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions for Seth? <laughs> Okay, you got to see everybody that's been stepping up for snow blowing and stuff. I've got guys that have been coming in early, working 10, 12 hour days, hopping in the plow truck, Brad, myself, a couple of the other guys. Jeff is on call if we need him. You know, I just have to answer my phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming, too. Just when you get caught up on the other stuff, bam, another six inches. I have not seen this much snow, and I don't know how long. How much did we get yes like last night, yesterday? I know, it's way worse than Bermuda though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard I heard like, like you hit the county line and then like you can actually see the road run and stuff back. I heard that further west of here they got yeah, significantly they got more too. They got hammered, you know, like I heard. Yeah. <clears throat> you got lucky. Okay. Uh, and that's a good segue right into the transportation guy. I don't have a lot. Um uh, I have a lot going on, but I don't have a lot because I don't have a lot. No, I haven't had a lot of time to kind of get my stuff together. But um, I'm also down two two drivers right now. One took a leave of absence, and the other one is is uh, retired medically because of a medical reason. So I'm down two drivers, which means I'm down two subs. So I'm kind of down to Dale and I right now. I'm playing the bird. So. And luckily, Doyle James is making a lot of these trips. But, um, I know we have ads out for a couple drivers right now. I don't know if we've got any applications in. I have no idea. Um, but Seth and I got a few ideas. We're probably going to try to figure out between the two of us to maybe entice somebody to possibly apply for you know, maybe a Split it up as a four and four full time. Yeah. Or boss for custodial per day. Uh, we're not. We haven't diced it out yet, but no. yeah. So I mean, I got to figure out. Luckily, there's been. A, I thought we were gonna have to last Wednesday. I thought we were gonna have to uh, combine a bus drop, but we're not gonna have to because of COVID. And then the other thing I was going to talk about is February 7th, um, every entry level driver's training requirements start, which means anybody that's never have, that's our, doesn't already have a license has to go through this um, training requirement, which is you have to pick from like a registered training place. And I've kind of looked into it, and I think that I've talked to Brent. He doesn't really know what's going on because I was figuring between me, him, and Rozo, Warren and Rozo, maybe we could get somebody that's certified to possibly train some of these drivers that's close instead of having to drive somewhere. But nobody really is, it was just kind of waiting for something to happen, and that's not my thing. So I think I'm going to look into and see what I got to do for myself to get registered as a entry level driver's trainer myself, and then I can train these drivers for the last portion of it before they can do the skills test. Um, I don't know exactly what it entails. I haven't got that far yet. But I tried to get many people to pop, I tried to say, hey, you know, if we to get it before February 7th, you basically want to take this college course, you know. And I don't really know if it's like a college course, but I would imagine it's something like that. Um, and nobody really, I mean, I can't drag them. I had many people, yeah, send me an email. I'm sure I sent 15 emails to some people that I talked to that think about maybe driving, and nobody was really going into it. Now, pretty much, they they have to take the test, have their permit for two weeks before they can take the actual over the road or the knowledge or the actual uh, behind the bus. So now it's like I can't even know what you really apply now. So I never. That was my one goal is to get a few drivers before that. That February 7th date, but I don't see it happening unless somebody goes to tomorrow and gets their permit. 
clean the room real quick and we're going to take the bus test. So it's even even if you have a class A, let's say you've had a class A for you know your whole life and you want to come to that bus, you still have to pay for entry level because they're making us do it for school buses. You just you know you get just to get the school bus. So basically for your up your license you have to take this entry level driver's training course requirement. And so I'll probably have some more info on it next work session on what I got to do to become an entry level driver's trainer. And I don't know if, if it's just one person should do it or if you get, should get two people to do it or I don't really know. I got to look into it. I have a training instructor for the sheriff's office. I had to go to like a week and a half long or week, week of class down in the cities for a week and some stuff. I don't know if it's something like that. And then I was this the state considered me a UVOC instructor, emergency vehicle operation instructor. So I don't. I'm guessing it's something like that. It's like I'll go to a training to become a. And I don't. It could be a, like that, like a week long, or it could be like I gotta take a college course. I'm not really sure yet. So just the federal <laughs> transportation yeah. thing. Yeah, it's like the. Depart U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. So they, they pull the book. So basically, what's going on is each state kind of has their own requirements, and uh, now they're calling kind of all under one umbrella. So no state's going to be less than another or more than another state. They all got to abide by these federal motor carrier stuff. Um, you have to be on their certified list to right. provide the instruction. And, right. But you can't find list. anywhere that says what you have to have <coughs> in place to be on the list. He started his own trucking company, and he said the biggest pain in his butt was this federal motor carriers. So you have to jump through. He said it was ridiculous. So. Which is good, because then, you know, I've seen drivers that have CDLs, and you wonder why they have them. <laughs> so it, I don't really doesn't really bother me besides the fact that just another hoop to, to get a bus driver, which we can't get them now on the Easter list in there. You know, a lot of our people that are getting to drive a bus are, you know, retirement age, and they're really like, oh, you gotta, yeah, I gotta take a class. I gotta work on a computer. It's probably gonna be computer based. And they're gonna be like, what? Uh, so, but if I can be the trainer and facilitate here in house, Maybe you know, we can run it through community ed and yeah. get some money. Well, oh, Sam's there already hit me up several times. <laughs> with, uh, yeah. Regional training. provider. There you go. I have looked into becoming a driver's ed instructor, and that's also a pain in the butt. Too, so. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do all of it. So. so you'd be a trainer specifically for just bus drivers? Well, the, I, I read up on it. And you have to be, I don't have a class A driver's license. I never have, I always just had my class B with a bus endorsement. So you as a trainer can only train to what you have. So if I was gonna be like a class A trainer, then I'd have to go and get my own, I'd have to get a class A pass the test. But I, I can do up to what we need for equivalent of a bus driver. So that's all I'll be able to train. But you're saying now anybody who signs up, regardless of what they have, still have to take that one. If you're going to, yeah. If you're going to be an instructor. So like. To be an instructor or to be a bus driver? To be a bus driver, but that, you have to go to like a, it has to be registered through this, the federal motor carriers. You have to be registered as an instructor under them. And you have to have certain guidelines that you have to reach. And it's quite a bit different than before. So like if Cody wanted to drive, he'd have to do that. Even though he already has right, because you're a bunch of different letters on his right. driver's license. That's what I'm saying. Even you, you get an old truck driver that wants to come drive a bus, he's got to go and take a I was class. just making he's sure I understood. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's getting a bus license. When did you say the February 7th? Seven, yeah. Five? So I'm kind I've of. Been before before that, right there, yeah. If you could maybe get it done. He'd have, because like I said, you have to have, you have to have your thing for 14 days. Before you can actually take over the road, so I'm getting down to like day or tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
That's not looking good. Call him up. 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 Call him you don't only want so to be a anyway, sub. But if I can become an instructor and I don't got to send them down to wherever, you know, I'm sure some colleges like Northland College and, you know, probably Bemidji Tech College probably have a, a, a course all lined up ready to go. Well, I bet the instructor is going to be ugly for yeah. getting it. It's going to be, it's going to be a course. Yeah, it's federal. So yeah. They, yeah, they can make something wrong on anything. So. But, so I'm going to look into it. And I think we're kind of out of options unless we want to, and who's really going to want to come drive the bus if we got to tell them they got to go to like Lamigi for a week straight or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, you know, so. Yay. Throwing a Hawaiian cruise. Yeah. <laughs> Finish it. Yeah. Gave me. So, anyway, we'll get through it. Plus driver's sign-on bonuses. And then I was looking on the internet for some what a lot of people are doing to, you know, it's a, one of them said, maybe you don't need more bus drivers, you need, maybe you need to cut your routes. And I was like, I should look into that. And I'm like, we're full for every bus at every kid ride. So I, like, I, I looked at it just for COVID reasons. I thought, well, if I had to go down a bus drivers, how can I get everybody home? And I could combine one route and kind of fill, sprinkle it on the other routes, and that's all I can do. Basically, turn our seven routes into or eight routes into seven routes. So we already trimmed the fat so much that we can't anymore. So, but hopefully, you know, it seems like we always think we're not going to get somebody who gets fried or a lot of other positions. And hopefully, somebody will fly, fly with you. We'll see. If not, we got other options. Well, we get Jeff and Tim. Bring Hannah. Yeah. I can bring a car seat in there. School board member. Yeah. I don't think I've the seat belts. I, can, I don't know if they'll go through a car seat, will they? Hey, I, bring I bet we can buckle in a seat. car seat. Yeah. <laughs> Just like whatever we yeah. hey, We'll make I've it work. I've been strapping my two year old in a car seat for about two weeks now. In a yeah. bus? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, see, it can be done. Me and Hannah are going to start driving. All right. You got a first person. Why don't you just drive? I mean, I don't know. I got nothing else it. going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe take the bus. I could take home a bus. Maybe <laughs> take a bus. No, that'd be dangerous in my yard. All right. All right. I don't have really have anything else. Well, we'll see if we can't find you some more bus drivers. I think that's the key. We need to find coaches. We need to find bus drivers. We got a math teacher. And maintenance. Yeah, Sodium. maintenance. We need that. Snowplow drivers. And cooks, still. <laughs> Another pair might not hurt either. Yeah. So. <laughs> Since we're making a list. <laughs> Christmas is over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> or find the right person with a lot of different talents. There right? you go. Cece, you want to take the stage? <laughs> what do you need up there? Oh, well, um, we have our, uh, Jack and I have webinars every week with the uh, Food and Nutrition Service to uh, MBE, and they are preparing us to plan to return to normal for our food program next year. So, um, we've got, it's hard because they say we're returning, but So our compensatory revenue, which is driven by free and reduced, was one hundred and ninety-seven thousand. 
No, this year it's 107. 107. And Next it's normally, year it's down to 80,000. Mm -hmm. And it's normally like 300,000. Because that's the number of yep. free and reduced. Free and reduced. So, so the application that you send out from what I recall, I mean, it's kind of thick, isn't it? I mean, is well, that? Well, actually, that's hideous, but that includes a lot of your annual notices that are required to send out to, I mean, we can combine it yeah. to make it for one mailing, and that might be another idea, just do one. I don't know. Is it is it overwhelming when they get this? That could be. What's the documentation required? Not, they just fill it out, and the only, if you were to fill it out, you just fill out what you, what the question asks for your monthly income, and how many are in your family, and, and then I have to verify a certain percentage of how many applications are approved. They also have to be approved. You can't just fill it out and say, okay, you know, they have to be approved. And there's no way it could be like electronic? It doesn't have to be? It, it is electronic. It is electronic. Got, oh, okay. But I, I only have three this year. Electronic? Electronic. But it's hard this year, too, I think, because it's they know it's free, so they what's the point of filling yeah, it out? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, two years now, they've known it's free. So that's why, but that's a good idea. Maybe that's, maybe what we should do, make it too overwhelming. And Put it on the website. Post a link do, on Facebook. Well, no, when you send it, because the require, we have to send it. It has to be mailed. Oh, but I mean, could you also right and on and on the when the when I send it out, it states that there's online applications and yeah. all the stuff you send out. F plus you have to mail it, but it, they don't have to complete right. it, it that way. Right, it has to go to every family. Not every family has online access. So when when is it anticipated that it will be known that it's? We don't know. <laughs> They could get, like, I'm just like, how much, you? like, yeah, like, do we start letting them know in April, or, you know? They, they wanted to give a better notice than what they have the last two years, because two years ago, we did the summer, pro summer um, food program, which is free, but then they went to a, this year went to a seamless, which we knew, like, two months before we were preparing for this, which means, which is another good thing, though, is our seamless, we're going to get higher reimbursement. I just saw that, yeah. Yeah. So we'll be at high reimbursement. And we have a pretty, our breakfast count is down, way down, but our, our um, lunch count is still, I think that's because we're very empty. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so our counts are good, so the reimbursement's good. So the compensatory aid is, but I also think we should explain compensatory aid better. Because if you'll all put in there to fix our compensatory aid, we put in the FS kit. So maybe if we, Programs and the numbers. So we, I, it, the numbers are based on not just the applications put in, but the ones that are approved. Yes. The right. approved applications. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we so just don't know if they're out, approved until they fill it out. And, right. You have to. If I send out an application, I only get like 60 back, and only 40 qualify. No, they're only 40 approved. So, is that something we could do at like meet the teacher night? We've done that. We've, we've put up a teaching, sign and had computers right and. The, yeah. Right at the entrance. Oh, yep. we can't. Like people the do. other thing is we already can't overtly um, say, okay, you know, so that they, we can't say, fill this out because we can't identify them. So why can't we, okay, you have to fill out this application. We can't do that. Can we have everyone fill it out? No. Okay. Or apply or right. whatever. No. Why we not? Because it's like privacy. It's, it's a very big privacy. And if anybody... I'm actually the only one that knows who uh, is approved, except for we have to have one other person. Well, I guess that's where I was going. I mean, if everybody applied, then there would be no stigma that, oh, is this person but qualified or whatever. Everybody to apply? Because yeah. she's saying yeah. that she can't have you walk up to the table and fill it out right there she because then everybody would know that well, that's I know, your but, but I mean, that would be applying. so, but yeah. if everybody, if we... And everybody if it was and everybody, everybody did it, then there would be a no one person, person. bribery. So, <laughs> well, I was what, what can we offer? Is there anything? Off the turkey. <laughs> yeah. When I was at Lake Park Audubon, so maybe five or six years ago, when they really wanted to get people across the board to just apply, their incentive was just for filling it out, you get like a pat, an adult pass to a game. It helped immensely. So if you think about what incentive would entice them just to 
fill out that sheet of paper. Cece, uh, have you heard from any of the webinars the, if they would use uh, MA billing as a qualifier for what? MA billing? Oh, no. They haven't brought that up. Though. And that's another thing. You, you qualify if you are on a, a food program SNAP or federal reservation or foster or this. But if you're on MA, you don't qualify. Huh. And that's one of the big concerns um, that they talk about. So other than the pot of money, just out of curiosity, does it change the food the kids get, or is it just... Actually, Jackie's been really struggling, because it is a different... You've got to, she's got to come in for different flavors. Because the National School Lunch Program has specific... You know, they have to have so much... And I don't understand the food, so that's a Jackie question. But they've kind of uh, cut the requirements a little bit with um, the student versus the summer. But the compensatory revenue, no, does not affect the food issues, the different programs. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah the, like, the compensatory revenue, it just runs through the general fund. Well, that was the thing where it's like, okay, you guys fill this out, and if we get enough, you guys are going to get better food. <laughs> no, we still have to follow the different programs. No, and it's the same thing as a quantity. You know, they have, like, they have different like, measurements. Their ladles yeah. are like half a cup or fourth a cup. They're not just ladles. I mean, everything is. And now she's worried as we go into March, February, March, whether she, she's even really worried about some of the food that she can get. So there's a shortage of that. Milk. Milk. Just wait till the CDL thing works its way through. <laughs> <laughs> but I also wanted to make sure, I know Jeff's mentioned that Mary has to do that. We wanted to make sure that um, we saw that she wanted to thank the staff. And they're still running short staff anyway, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, because wasn't there a time when the, the three regular, the three people that have been there a long time, they were all out, right? There was only like a few days where, like, yeah, right, where like, and maybe there's a new hire and she was there, but the people, the well, experienced there. folks were all out, right? So. Yeah, this last week, a new gal that we hired. It was so bad. They won't let me serve in there, but they actually had me help put the stuff off the truck into the freezer. So that's how bad. <laughs> the it manual was. labor. Yes. Yeah. But. <laughs> no. No, just just the groceries, and I was cutting those uh, styrofoam things in half for because we we're running out of plates. The sandwiches. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you. Uh, any other business on the working session that we want to talk about? Okay, well, let's adjourn the working session. Anybody want to take a break? Okay. How long's the regular meeting going to last? I think not long, right? I don't think so. Yeah. So, let's go. Pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order at 707. Uh, I need a motion in a second to approve the agenda as presented. Make a motion. I'll second. Johnson, Ellis, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Unanimously. I need a motion in a second to approve the consent agenda as presented, which includes the approval of the minutes, the approval of invoices, statements, and bank reconciliation, the approval of personnel, resignation, retirements, and appointments, including the resignation of Bertel Amundsen, 
custodian and Bruce Sindelier, assistant hockey coach, and appointments, including Barb Castle as an assistant cook, Nick Anderson as a varsity baseball coach, Dean Kraus as an assistant hockey coach, and Amy Hendrickson as a high school math teacher. I'll make that motion. Motion I'll by Sostergaard, second by Robita. All, uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Do we have any board presenters? Do we have any written communications? Uh, letters of resignation. Did we don't need to read? I don't. No, they are in the. They were. Yep, they were in, in the, the package. package. We okay. should thank Bertle for. Yeah, I want to. Yes. If we're getting into that, I was thinking we we're going to get the letters read, but you all saw those in the packet, obviously, and I. Bertle been here a long time. Two years, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's one of those guys, like you say, who always stuck his nose in where it needed yep. to be, whether it was, hey, need the softball field figured out or you need, you know, some snow moved, right? I mean, so he'll be a tough replacement. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruce moving on and uh, excited about the other appointments. So thank you, Bertle. Um, there are no more written communications. Uh, Old business. I need a motion and a second to approve the revised safe in-person learning program as presented by Superintendent Nelson. Make the motion. It's a motion by Johnson. I'll second. Second by Sonstegard. Discussion. I think we had it already in the working session, but hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. I need a motion and a second to approve the tiered level implementation of health and safety procedure at the high, at the high level. Make the motion. A motion by Johnson. A second. Second by Sonstergaard again. I will entertain discussion. That's just what we, that's more we've spacing done. than just what we've kind of implemented. We've yeah, it's more of an alert that yeah. we're having higher positives, just not a... And you changed some of the, the last meeting. Change some right. of the, yeah. the, the only difference being that there were some language changes. Yeah. And yep. uh, we're all, we discussed that during the working session. But yep. they're yeah. on the website if people wanted to see. Yep. And it provides kind of a heads up. And it, there's still the option of masking and locking down the building if things tended to get worse. Right. But I don't. Right. And our don't athletics that. would uh, coincide with yep. the MSHSL stuff. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. New business. Uh, I need a motion and a second to approve the lease agreement with uh, the Little Kids and Us Daycare. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion by Robita. Second. Second by Johnson. Discussion? It is our third, fourth, day, fourth daycare. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the fact that there were two names on it though is still one daycare that's being opened up. Yes, they are working together in one room. Yes, but they get more kids. I believe up to thirteen. But don't ask me the details on ages and stuff. So, what's a single person get? Ten. Um, it just depends on their qualifications. Yeah, there's different licenses. Um, but I think they actually get closer to fifteen or sixteen. It's depending be. on the age. Like if they yeah. didn't take an infant, they could take an extra toddler. Yeah. Give me the impression that the uh, providers like having it at the school. Because mm -hmm. again, very much so. I think parents like it at the school too. And I think the parents like yeah. it at the school. I think it works I that's help that we've got from the daycare providers. What a safer spot to have it done. You know, for insurance purposes and for inspection really easy through the schools. So. Yeah, and that's been quite an abrupt change. I mean, I know yeah. you were on the ground movement when that occurred here not too yeah. long ago, but I mean, now we've got four in the school, yeah. and mm -hmm. I think the community's looking at it like that's their expectation, that we're daycare. I mean, those kids that age, I mean, are we approaching where our daycare's kind of covered, or are we still short daycare? No, no, we're short. Yeah. The, the infant one. Is still <laughs> the infant one. Yeah. 
Yes. So we and haven't more common. totally thrown out the the center format, um, and that's still something that will be discussed. And I think that'd be great. Yeah, we uh, can do that. So next step would be to meet with our providers and and social services and see what kind of combination of whatever we could offer in the building and how we could staff it and what makes the most sense and serves the most families. But for now, this is the best option we have uh, for getting something in the school and available sooner than later. Okay, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye to approve the lease. Aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Need a motion in the second uh, to approve the reading of policies 102, equal educational opportunity, 406, public and private personnel data, and 413, harassment and violence. Make a motion. Motion I'll by Johnson. Second it. Second by Robita. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Need a motion and a second to approve and adopt policies 501 school weapons, 507 corporal punishment, 515 protection and privacy of pupil records, and 524 internet acceptable use and safety policy. I'll make that motion. Motion by Ellis. Second. Second by Johnson. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Need a motion and a second to approve the DJ contract. Who's with, that? and I need a name on that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I wanted to name it. Entertainment. Entertainment. One less thing no. to worry about. <laughs> who? Ooh. Okay, once again, Owns entertainment. Uh, so it's with an N, not yep. N T E R T A I N. Entertainment. entertainment. One less thing to worry about. The way they spell it, that makes me worry, but. Not for prom, you said? Yeah. Yep. Pro group for a high school kid? Well, or? I was asking who it was. That yeah. actually. Runs it. It's not a student home. Okay. We've had them for like, I don't know. This same one. I believe it's the same group that oh, okay. they shared with Pulse last year. Okay. okay. I'll make the motion. I think that's yeah. Up there. I'll uh, second it. Second by Sonstigard. I think, yeah. Johnson and Sonstigard. Oh, Carla. Robita. 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 No, I was Me. Second. Carla. Oh, I was going to say, sure. Okay, so <laughs> Robita. I thought I heard Sonstigard. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, other business? Okay. Adjourning at 717. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. 75? Yep. It is. Okay. Okay. That's what we thought. And, and we voted on that the first meeting. Yeah. I'm getting that kind of there. We have this. Okay. So these are from, these are old ones. So you were still the chair then? So I still need to sign? Yes. So. And so I still need to sign those too, right? Okay. If it says.